hey guys what's up so in this lesson i'll be talking about prelims and mains examination i'll give you a basic outline about how these examinations are conducted and very very basic about everything so that those people who do not need notification even they can figure out certain stuff and like because it's very painful to read that notification and if you feel this course is helping in any way you can give a five star and you can write a review which will help us in bringing more and more awesome courses and in the comment section you can provide your feedback or queries and you can share this link as much as possible and you can follow me on an academy on this link so what is the pattern of preliminary examination so it consists of mcqs which are like multiple choice question it is always like one question followed by four options a b or c or d either of them is correct but only one of them is correct it is objective in nature maximum 400 marks sometimes it comes down to 385 also so what is the pattern of preliminary examination it consists basically of two papers that is paper one and that is paper two now maximum obviously 400 marks but sometimes it can be 380 also so it does not determine the final order of merit this is the key point so you don't need to prepare very ruthlessly for it but if you don't select if you don't get selected in it you will not be giving mains examination either so make sure that your selection is ensured so you have to study a lot for that but you don't need to top this preliminary examination it is just qualifying in nature and paper 2 is also qualifying in nature because there is no evaluation of paper 1 so is that understood if like paper 2 is qualifying in nature it's okay but many people think that it, it will get through but i have seen many people who actually would have cleared the cutoff in paper 1 but because they could not qualify in paper 2 there was no evaluation of paper 1 so make sure you give equal importance if you are weak in paper 2 just give one week at least week is w e a k and one week is w e e k it is just a screening test to screen like non serious candidates from serious candidates so 98% of the candidates are filtered out at this stage so make sure you are in the top 2 to 3% candidates and those who are eligible as declared by union public service commission after one or two months of the examination only you can appear for mains examination now are my marks in civil services preliminary examination significant to determine my final marks this is again a common frequently asked question by beginners answer is no absolutely not it is just a screening test based on which candidates will be selected for the civil services mains examination it will not again i am repeating it will not be counted for the final order of merit but you have to put in a lot of effort to clear prelims because only 2% of the people clear prelims many people who are selected in the services for example there is a guy who got 400 something rank he could not clear prelims this time there was a guy who got some 300 something rank he called me sir i am not able to clear prelim this year and he is already a serviceman so there are a lot of people who cleared civil services examination got like 110 120 rank next year they could not even clear prelims so you need to prepare for it separately how many candidates will be selected for the mains examination civil services mains examination about 12 to 13 times of total approximate number of vacancies so if vacancies is 1100 then 1100 into 13 is roughly 15000 14000 to 15000 so that is how the candidates are selected now how many papers do i have to write in the preliminary examination again like there are two papers gs paper 1 and gs paper 2 of which paper 2 is again qualifying in nature what does it that mean this candidate has to secure 33% marks in GS paper 2 if GS paper 1 has to be evaluated. So if you do not get, let's say 200 mark paper, so you need to get 67 marks out of that. That is like more than 33%. If you get 67, 68 or above, it will be qualified. No matter if you get 90 or 190 or 100 or 200, does not matter. So don't focus on GS paper 2, focus on GS paper 1. Because not only it will help you to crack prelims, it will also help you to crack mains. Because the same syllabus for prelims and mains as far as general studies is concerned, almost 80 to 90 percent overlap is there, except a few topics like world history, etc. So, how many papers do you have to write in preliminary examination? Answer is two, but focus has to be on the paper one. Unless you are exceptionally weak in paper two, especially for Hindi medium students, don't mind it. You have to prepare for it at least give one week so that you qualify that. Will there be negative marking? Obviously, recently they introduced it. It was not there 10 years ago, let me be very frank. There will be negative marking for incorrect answers for all the questions except some of the questions where the negative marking will be inbuilt in the form of different marks being awarded. So earlier they used to ask the situation based question if you were this what you would have done. So it does not have negative marking as such but if you give A then you get one mark if you give B then you get 0.75 marks something like that. But rest assured every question has negative marking just remember that paper one may every question has negative marking so uh, but don't be afraid of that you need to anyway attempt 85% of the paper otherwise you will not qualify anyway. 
there are four alternatives to the answer to every question for each question for which a wrong answer has been given by the candidate one third of the marks assigned to that question will be deducted as penalty and if a candidate gives more than one answer it will be treated as a wrong answer even if one of the given answers happen to be correct and there will be same penalty as above for that question so if a candidate gives more than one answer and it will be treated as a wrong answer is that understood okay so don't like put key by your confused written b and d so you fill both the golas and it will not work like that and if a question is left blank that is no answer is given by the candidate there will be no penalty for that question but again i'll say that don't be afraid of negative marking attempt at least 85 percent of the questions what is the pattern of the mains examination it consists of a written examination and an interview test so it is basically of 2025 marks it does not require any specialized study it tests candidates basic understanding of all the relevant issues ability to analyze and take a view of conflicting socio-economic goals objective and demands there is one essay paper there are four gs papers there are two optional papers so these are the seven papers and apart from that there are two papers on indian languages so as i was saying the main examination consists of two qualifying papers which are paper a on indian languages any of the scheduled languages and paper b on english and seven papers considered for merit again i'll speak essay uh, is of 250 every paper is of 250 mark so that will give you 1750 marks plus 275 marks event interview so that is 2025 gs paper 1234 essay plus two optionals optional might be removed next year but don't like go into rumor mongering mode we'll wait for the notification Qualific qualifying papers are for 300 marks each with 25 percent marks eligible for qualification so you need to have these 25 percent marks at least that is 90 marks in each paper okay now what next after the written examination candidates who obtain such minimum qualifying marks in the written part of the main examination as may be fixed by the commission at their discretion shall be summoned for them for an interview for a personality test and a number of candidates to be summoned for interview will be about twice the number of vacancies to be filled so it is actually thrice because if they are th thousand vacancy they ask for three thousand people and this interview will carry 275 marks with no minimum qualifying marks so that is a good part you don't need to have at least 100 marks otherwise you will not qualify there is nothing like that usually they do not give less than 90 marks usually so what marks determine my final selection so marks thus obtained by the candidates in the main examination written part as well as interview would determine their final ranking and candidates will be allotted to the various services keeping in view their ranks in the examination and the preference expressed by them for the various services and posts so depending on your preference depending on your carter preferences depending on your marks depending on your uh, category whether you're from general sc st obc depending on all these factors you will be given the final services so thank you for watching this lesson have an awesome day